Hi, Kevin here. Welcome to the Claremont Classic Garage. It's a beautiful Saturday morning in late August, and today we've got a little project to uh, get us through the day. Here we've got a little 21 inch lawnmower. It's a classic old Canadian tire one. It's got a three and a half horse Tecumseh engine on it. Uh, it's been sitting for a few years. I tried to start it. It is turning over. That's about all I can give it at the moment. Um, the recoil broke and you can tell by this bolt that me or somebody has been at that already. So anyway, we're going to dive into this thing and see if we can get it, get it running. First thing we got to do is, is pull the recoil off. I took the screws out already and we're going to, uh, take it apart and get the cord fished back through here so we can turn the darn thing over and that then we'll at least maybe have a half a chance of getting it started. Well, that was pretty easy. Um, I fixed the recoil, put it back on. It hasn't run in a long time, so trying to get these things to pull fuel on that and get the carburetor filled up, whatnot, it was a bit of a chore, so I cheated. I shot some quick start down the air cleaner. It started right up, it quit. The second time I shot some down, it started up and it kept running. Um, it ran funny for a little bit. It pumped out a lot of blue smoke because I'd had it tilted backwards, which sometimes gets uh, some oil into the chamber. Um, anyway, it uh, it's running well now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top it up with fresh fuel. I'm going to service up the air filter. I'm going to make sure it's full of oil. And I'm going to go put it to work and mow some, some heavy grass and see how it performs. Okay, so I took this thing down. I figured the best workout for it would be to mow the ditch because it was about a foot tall. So I went down in the ditch and run the snot out of this thing for about 40 minutes. Um, finally, right at the end, it started, it started coughing and missing and, and it would quit and it wouldn't stay running. Um, my guess is there's a piece of junk gotten into the main circuit in the carburetor. So I'm going to let it cool down and we'll fix that up. Whatever is wrong with it, it's nothing major. I'm going to buy a new cord for it because I fixed the cord today, but it turns out now <laughs> that it's been fixed so many times, it's actually too short now. It makes it really hard to start the machine because it's only got about 12 inches <laughs> of throw. So we'll get a new cord for it. I might spring for a new sparky plug and uh, we'll fix up the carburetor, flush some clean gas through the tank, make sure that's all cleaned up. And I think we've got another good lawnmower here. I'm also going to have to patch up this, um, the mulch door is rotted out on it. That's just a piece of tin. We'll patch that up. This is going to be great. I'm going to have two awesome lawnmowers. So right now I'm going to take the carburetor off and we're going to open it up. There's not much to these. Pull the bowl off it, clean the junk out of it, put it back together, and it should work properly then. So here's a carburetor, we got it off. Um, I found it was easy to actually take, take it off with the intake manifold attached to it. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, there's no reason really to be afraid to take these things apart. There's nothing to them. Um, just draw a picture or take a picture of any linkages that are on it. So you know you get them hooked up, right? Getting the linkages hooked back up is probably the, the most important part. Um, this one, unlike uh, some of them, it doesn't have a choke, it's just got a primer. So you, you prime it, that shoots raw fuel right into it, and that kind of acts like a choke. So anyway, we're going to grab a screwdriver, or I'm sorry, a wrench. We're going to take out this, this bolt. This holds the fuel bowl onto the carburetor, and we'll see what, what's going on inside there. All right, so you can see there's all kinds of bits and pieces of crud down there in the fuel bowl. Uh, in here, it's, I mean, it's not that bad. I've seen them a lot worse, but, but there is junk in there. Here's the float. The general rule of thumb is you're just going to hold it up like that and make sure that the float is parallel with the carburetor. This one maybe is a tiny bit high, but it's negligible. So we're going to pull the float off. You just grab this with needle nose pliers. Pull the float pin out. All right. 
There's our needle valve. <laughs> Where is it? There it is there. You see the needle valve on the end of the float? It's nice and clean. There's some more junk. Look at that. Look at all that all that junk in there. That up in there, right up in the center of it is the main jet. So we're going to just blow all this stuff out and make sure it's good and clean. So we don't have this junk floating around in there anymore. That to me looks like bits of this fuel hose. We're going to replace that. The fuel hose may be degrading. Everything's nice and clean. We took a wire brush and went around here where the, the seal ring, it's like a big rubber O-ring, where that goes. We cleaned there in the bowl. I'm probably going to put some oil or some grease or something around there just to help it crunch in and seal. So our seal is set in place. Our float is back in and now when you put this together you see this step in the float. That step you want to put right under here at the hinge, the hinge side of the float. And then we're going we're gonna to make sure that that goes over that seal and then we'll put the, we'll put the bolt in. All right, put a new fuel hose on her. Now we're going to go put the carburetor back on the engine. Yeah, we got the carburetor mounted back on. All the little linkages, the little mystery linkages working. This here is the governor. So what we've got left to do now is mount the air cleaner on, uh, then the cowl and the throttle cable and the fuel tank, and we should be ready to run it again. All back together, I put a little bit of fuel in it. I've got no leaks. It fired right up. Runs good. So now what I got to do, I've got two jobs left on this thing. No, three. Um, one, this rope is just too darn short. So I need to get a new rope, um, like a Canadian tire or something. The throttle is broken. The little handle is gone. I can sort of work it, but it's a pain in the neck. So I'm going to replace that, the throttle cable. And we have to fix this rotted out mulch door. And I will probably give it an oil change. And then that's it. This one's ready to go in service. After putting this thing through its paces, I'm pretty happy with how it worked. So we're going to go ahead and actually put some new parts on this thing and get it running really, really great and reliable. Um, <laughs> the pull cord came out again. It's just too old. It's too brittle. Uh, I bought a new one. Um, I'm also going to address this. We've got a screw for a handle on the throttle, so I bought a new throttle assembly. And we have to actually repair the mulch door is rotted out. This is because this thing had a, a, an optional bagger, right? So we don't have the bag. So we're just going to patch that up with a piece of metal. And it'll be fine to go. I got a new spark plug for it. We'll give it an oil change, sharpen the blade, oil up the wheels. This thing will be like new when we're done. We're also going to repair this, well, what's left of the, the deflector shield at the back. It just keeps it from firing rocks and stuff out at you. Kind of nice to have. <laughs> okay, I riveted a little patch over the hole in the door. And then I riveted a piece of rubber skirting on the bottom of it. Just to keep this from getting hit in the face with rocks. Now I guess while I've got it lifted up, I'll take the blade off, sharpen it, and dump the oil. So I had it up in the air, I drained the oil, I put new oil in it, I sharpened the blade, and I changed the spark plug. Now we're uh, going to repair the recoil start. Here's our part, it's just a universal recoil starter. Uh, we're going to take this apart by removing this bolt. And then we can wrap the new cord around the pulley and put it back in and wind up the spring. And we can put it back on the machine. Okay, got the recoil repaired and reinstalled. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the throttle thing. Now, of course, because this is some lawnmower, I couldn't even figure out what kind of lawnmower this thing is. We got a universal throttle control. So, um... This one is going to have to kind of stay on there because the, you can see the, the engine brake cable kind of goes through it. So we're just going to piggyback the new one 
on top of, of this one right here. And it should be okay. Once we're done, we'll cut off that old cable and we should be good to go. Now looking at this, the new part, I may be able to take the two of these apart and just install the lever from that one inside this one. And that'd be slick, wouldn't it? But we'll find out. So there she is, all fixed up, ready to go to work. I got the throttle control changed. Now the only thing I think I may be up against with this is I think this may be marked backwards for this application. I don't know why they would give you a slow fast and fast slow decal and let you put it on yourself depending on you know your machine. But anyway that's a small thing to deal with. If I have to I will just make a new label on my label maker and replace that. But anyway I'm going to take it outside now and crank it up. All right, started right up. The throttle control is marked backwards, so I'll have to deal with that after, but um, I just lowered it down a notch. I thought it was kind of high. I'm gonna go down and hack around in the ditch, mow some grass. So that went mostly okay. It runs beautiful. It mows great. It's easy to push. Um, I was doing fine. I was getting the ditch mode, and then the gas tank decided to fall off. So what we've got here, um, it's just got two cheesy tabs that slide down into a keyway in the in the cowl. And you can see here, uh, one of them came off. So I'm going to try and get a number for this gas tank and see if I can buy a new one or even a good used one on eBay. Uh, otherwise, for now, I'm just going to come up with some kind of a, a cobbled up repair. I, I might just make a little strap that goes from here to here just to hold it. I'll screw through the top so I don't end up with gas leaking out all over the place. There's not really much I can do at this point because I don't have another gas tank. Well, I came up with a novel plan for the gas tank. We just put some tie wraps around it. You know what? It's on there good now. It's not going anywhere. That I think would be good enough for this machine. Um, you know, like I got it out of somebody's garbage. So I'm not, not complaining too much about it. So for garbage picking, I've spent about, I guess, $40 on it and a couple of hours of my life to get it fixed up. And now I've got a perfectly good lawnmower. I'm not sure what I'll do with it when I get my, my nice weed eater all sorted out. I may try to sell this one for, for 50 bucks or 60 bucks, whatever I can get for it. I don't know. We'll see if somebody needs one. Um, people I know are always asking me if I know of any good lawnmowers. It, um, you ain't going to get rich messing around with this stuff, but I'm just happy that it didn't go in the scrap. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly good machine. So anyway, if you see an old lawnmower in somebody's garbage, grab it. You can probably fix it and make it run again. There might even be anything wrong with it at all. Maybe they just went like my dad did and bought a, and bought a battery one because they've got a, a smaller lot. They don't need these old gas ones anymore. But anyway, that's, uh, that's a wrap on this. Um, thanks for watching. If you want to leave a comment or like my video or share my video, go right ahead. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Who knows what we'll be doing next time. Until then, thanks for tuning in to the Claremont Classic Garage. See you later.